If you need a break from the holiday weekend, you're in the right place. Apropos of Nothing starts now. I'm Chris Hill, and once again, we're taking a small break from investing and stock talk. If that's what you're looking for, we will be back with that on Tuesday. But if you're stressed out right now from the holidays or travel, or you're missing someone, whatever's going on in your world, if you just need a distraction, hang out with me, Bill Barker, and Bill Mann as we talk about alcoholic holiday drinks, rule changes we would use to make sports more interesting to watch, and since it's Christmas, we start with a question about the big man himself. A listener sent in a question that I had not thought about before, and it's simply, how much does Santa weigh? <laughs> and there are practical questions that's here. A, that's a direct question that I've never truly thought Depen- about before. Depends on the Santa, obviously. Well, I think he's referring to the actual Santa. Right, come on. Okay. Not a fake Santa, not a movie Santa. All right, well, the actual Santa, and I'm thinking it's close to 300 pounds. How's how how's he getting into most houses? Magic, yeah, Christmas magic, yeah. I mean, yeah. but the well, the question it, remains. The threshold question: Is he an elf? I, I he mean, is, by some famous accounts, a right jolly old elf. He is. I say that's canon. <laughs> I'd describe him as elf curious for sure. Elf adjacent? Elf adjacent. I think elf adjacent. Yeah. Yeah. Because he certainly is. Half elf? He might be half elf. Is depicted in popular culture as being different from the elves themselves. He's obviously not like one of the Lord of the Rings elves. Because they were more into the killing. Right. (laughs) Right. Well, listen. I mean, there's a new new, uh, movie where. Santa's doing some killing. It would, yes, it would be pretty awesome if you take like the Lord of the Rings, like Legolas the Elf. Yeah, that origin story is actually he becomes Santa. It, well, I mean, they could be like a mismatch buddy cop thing. <laughs> it could be like they're both elves, uh, but one you know is uh, facing Sauron and one is delivering toys, and they have to make it work. They have to make it work and solve crimes. <laughs> <laughs> together <laughs> you, you, you and your crime solving. i always did wonder why it was that jessica fletcher wasn't implicated in more of the thousands of murders she was around even if like even if just once in the third or fourth season it, it's a side plot oh yeah it's just like do I think we want she did it i think she did it do we want to <laughs> we we sure we don't want to <laughs> accuse her of <laughs> That's right. You know. That's right. And she just kept such a great disposition around all the murder. Yeah. Well, I, look, there I think that works. She's she's studied like there are actual murderers who of whom it was said like, "Oh, such a nice neighbor." I never would have suspected. And I it's mean, like, it's like, "Oh, if you're the Cabot Cove mayor, you're getting her to move." <sighs> yeah, probably. Yeah, I don't know. You've got a lot of murders going on. You need somebody to. I mean, despite the size of your town, I mean, your odds of being murdered in that town are about one in three. Yes. I was going right? to say, my memory of that show is it's not a particularly big town. No, uh, no. Like most places in Maine, not yeah. a big town. Right, yeah. right. Uh, How's old man Johnson? I was murdered. Yeah. Huh? Like, and this uh, brings up a point which I was uh, uh, asking you about. So you know, the most popular topics. For entertainment, you know, love, romance is number one. Topic you know, A. Topic yeah. A. Yeah. Topic A, whether it's song, movie, uh, TV series. And number two is murder. <laughs> uh, you know what? I'm, I had a long day at the office. I don't really, uh, I'm just going to relax and watch um, <laughs> some <know>. murder. <laughs> a bunch of murder shows. I'm just going to watch Law and Order for like, several hours. Or, or CSI. Yeah. Or, or NCIS. Yeah. Or... What are uh, Steve Martin and Martin Short? They're pretty funny. What are they working on? Murders <laughs> in the building. It, you, does, it does get glossed over in most shows. It's just like, well. Uh, let's murder. move. Let's move on to the solving of the crime. Yeah, yeah. yeah. The the uh, yeah. Any damage? Uh, apparently, uh, there is not any long lasting damage by they being are, around a murder. They are psychological tanks. I mean, could you imagine being around? What being a, like a homicide detective? No, being like no, being b- being a muggle pulled into you know with a murder that happens right by you. 
And you're like, oh, let's solve it. No, I'm like, I am moving to Maui. Oh, you're talking about only murders in the building. Any of them. Oh, yeah, yeah. Any where, of them. Where there just is sort of the absolute, civilians jump in. Yeah, the civilians jump, jump in. There's absolutely no like psychological damage, like, you know, let's just solve it. Yeah, it's no, good. let's not solve it. Well, it's because it's, it's entertaining. Yeah. It's fun. So I was watching uh, Murderville last night on Netflix, uh, Will Arnett, and... Uh, Conan O'Brien in this particular episode, and it does start off with a, a murder by a magician. Um, oh yeah, the, the, that yeah that episode opening. <laughs> yeah. So it, it's uh, yeah, I mean it's a topic. You you are being presented with apparent murders all the time, uh, people being sawed in half and generally going up in flames and things like that. Because it's fun. Because it's entertaining. That's why. Because every because we've already been programmed through experience in society to recognize the entertainment value of apparent death. I I, I think that um, many people in the entertainment industry would uh, simply point to the scoreboard. They would just say, l- l- "Here's this list of wildly popular shows that print money for our network season after season." And I think number one on that list uh, of people who'd be happy to point that out is Dick Wolf. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I don't think Dick Wolf The man exists. behind Law and Order. <laughs> is he still alive? Who could tell? He still makes like $70 he, million dollars every year. Yeah. Every year. He's on the like top 10 list of who made the most money in Hollywood this year. It's like, and number eight. Dick Wolf. I, we're we're going to get back to how much to stand away because I I feel like we've gone off on, gone off on a tangent. A we never bit. even <laughs> unpredictably <laughs> we the never. three of us have gone off on a tangent. But here to continue with the wolf theme, um, based on uh, the last show we did, uh, where we talked about uh, character arcs that we would like to see explored more. Mm-hmm. Uh, somebody wrote in. A listener wrote in and uh, suggested from the Quentin Tarantino universe. Winston Wolf from Pulp Fiction. Yeah. And really, any of the origin stories for any of the uh, color guys in Reservoir Dogs. See, and- although I feel like we kind of get, I think Tim Roth is Mr. Orange, and I think we kind of get his origin story because he's a cop. We get sort of the lead up to there. But- we, we, we do. Got to know about Mr. Pink, though. Why am I pink? Yeah. 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 But the wolf, you've got you've got a lot to play with. Oh there. My God. I mean, in, in just a couple of minutes of screen time, you've got a lot uh, to to work with. Yes, and it helps that it's played by Harvey Keitel. I mean, is he a superhero? <laughs> How can he uh, can he actually drive that fast? Is he the Flash? We don't know. Probably not. He just drives unbelievably fast. He drives unbelievably fast. He introduces himself by saying, "I'm Winston Wolf. I solve problems," and he proceeds to solve. In Pulp Fiction, a huge problem for a couple of the characters there. Yeah, and <laughs> by the way, the solution didn't seem all that complex. It didn't. Looking and- back on it, shouldn't they have been able to figure that part out themselves? <laughs> we need to clean the blood out of the car and, <laughs> I mean, and dispose but, of it somewhere. <laughs> that was the entire, you know, issue, right? And yet, it takes Winston Wolf, who is the person in charge, tells everyone what to do. They do it, for the most part, uh, without complaining. Uh, he's got the connection at the junkyard. He knows this is the junkyard where the car is going to go, and it, this car and this body will disappear, and no one will be the wiser. He has God knows how much cash in his pocket to buy uh, Quentin Tarantino's character. Jimmy. 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 Uh, a brand new bed set. And... Uh, so and he gets a good cup of coffee in. He does while get, while doing all that. He likes it. Mm. A lot of cream, a lot of sugar. <laughs> yeah. that, and by the way, that might be the only surprising thing about Winston Wolf that he takes his coffee with a lot of cream and a lot of sugar. <laughs> he seems like a just black coffee. Kind it's of like uh, it's like going to Dunkin' Donuts. Right. Yeah. Maybe maybe that's part of the origin story. He grew up in Boston. Could somehow be. lost the accent for the movie. So he grew up in Woonsocket, and that's. <laughs> <laughs> Shout out to Woonsocket. Nice. Getting back to Santa. Yeah. What do What do you think he was? You You, I, you I, brought I, this up. You must have a hot take. I think he's somewhere in the range of two seventy five. I yeah. think I, I don't think it's quite three hundred pounds because I I think he's I don't think he's like six five something he, like so that. You don't Is think he he's above a, he, six feet. You don't think he's a mountain man. You think he's pudgy. 
I don't think he's pudgy. I think he's probably somewhere in the range of six feet, six two, yeah. and goes two seventy five, and a lot of it is in his gut. I, I think he's like five ten max. Really? Why? He's, he's half elf, and he's old. There's yeah, yeah. There's that. He started shrinking a little bit. So you're saying his weight is what? I mean, he's he's like Ed Ed Asner. Okay. <laughs> you know. One of the best movie Santas, Ed Asner. Um, is but, he the know, best, though? Is he? Uh, is Ed Asner the best? Is Ed Asner in Elf the best movie Santa? Oh, he's on the short list. I think he's on the short list too. I think. Don't you think that the? Uh, I think Paul Giamatti and Fred Claus is on the short list. Yeah. And I think Sir Richard Attenborough doesn't get it, but he's on the short list because he's he's Sir Richard. Well, so in the Bizarro category, what about? Uh, Dan Aykroyd from Trading Places was that a good Santa? Well, he's eating, not, the, eat, eating the the salmon. Th- right, th- he's th- not beard. actually Santa. That's a separate category. But I, yeah, that's that's people wearing a Santa costume, and we'll get to that. Yeah. But um, uh, Rudolph in Rudolph, that Santa, it's pretty good Santa. He's a pretty good Santa. He uh, he, he certainly he's passed. not he's not three hundred. He's not two seventy five. No. Not at the beginning. I mean, he puts. About 100 pounds on um, in the week before Christmas. Right. So he's probably, yeah, because he's not tall. Because you, like, you put him next to Yukon Cornelius. I mean, like, Miss, that's a man. Yeah. Mrs. Claus is towering over him. <laughs> is she? I think so. I don't think, but part, isn't part of that her hair? Like, she, yeah. like she's got like yeah. that serious beehive thing going on. Uh, so we've we've solved what Santa weighs, or, or uh, I, th- I, I think I think we're somewhere in the ballpark of. No, it, it, between two and three hundred pounds, I think that's fair, depending on his height. Ballpark. I'm gonna go. You know what? I'm gonna say. I'm gonna say two forty to yeah, two eighty. Two hundred five and two ninety five are very different. Okay, so let's go like two forty to two eighty. Yeah, he's more than two forty, unless okay. he's like five four. He could be built like a speed bump. Might need more reindeer. Follow up question from the same listener: Is Santa diabetic? <laughs> 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 Lots of cookies and milk to consume on Christmas. I think I think he absolutely has to go into detox after that. Uh, yeah, that's probably why he loses the weight. I mean, it's just just really we just know about him eating all those cookies at Christmas, right? I, now, again, given the partial elf nature of him and the elf diet, which is candy, candy corn, candy canes, and syrup. Yeah. You're saying the the glucose levels might be different for elves than humans. He's partially made of sugar. <laughs> I think that's yeah, that's probably true. Um Mount Rushmore of holiday drinks, alcoholic holiday drinks. Are there other holiday dr- drinks that are alcoholic besides eggnog? Sure, there's mold wine. Mold wine like glue vine, mm-hmm. okay, which yeah. is absolutely number 1. Okay. Is that mold wine? Yeah. Or did you just make up a word? That I've never heard in my life. You've never heard that word? Gl- what is it? Glühwein? Glühwein. All of the Germans are nodding along right now saying, yeah. The three Germans who are listening right now? <sighs> yes, correct. You sent out some data recently about uh, where the, the listeners are in the world. To the, and the, as we've discussed, there are dozens. Yeah. Um, but uh, number four, I think, on the list surprised me. Maybe it was four or five. Was it Singapore? Yeah. 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 Lot like four on a five? percentage, yeah, or not on a percentage basis, but absolute, on a, right? On an absolute basis, Singapore, I think, is fifth. Pretty, uh, so pretty much everybody there. Yeah, because Singapore is five and a half million people, I think. Yeah. So and we've got seven listeners, so that's yeah, great. Yeah, all the dozens, so at least five people in this country, one the, in Canada, one in yeah, England, Australia, Australia yeah. and then yeah. One in Ireland. Yeah, there's only a few. Um, I, okay, so mulled wine. Yes, I've heard of mulled wine. That's an alcoholic holiday drink. Are there others? Like, I'm, I'm genuinely asking it because I can't, off the top of my head, think of any. And by the way, I don't know how old I was when I learned that eggnog has alcohol in it because there used to be, you know, um, dairies would sell in the grocery store non alcoholic eggnog. Which, when I was seven years old, that t- was it. Tasted amazing. It was sweet, creamy. It was fantastic. And then later, it was like, wait, what? People put what in this? Yeah. What are I the mean, grown-ups drinking? What I'm drinking, so much better. 
going back to the pre-dude times, I would think that like white Russians, kind of a kind of a winter drink. You think the Big Lebowski popularized white? I Russians? think the Big Lebowski it spread it across the year. Okay. What time of year do you suppose the Big Lebowski? It's in Southern California, so it's kind of seasonless. It is kind of seasonless. The only thing we know is um, it's early in the month because the guy. It's early in the whatever month it is. Whatever month it is, the guy comes. It's like you know, t- tomorrow's the tenth. <laughs> hey, dude, just want to remind you, you know, as your landlord, tomorrow's the tenth. I'm not sure that uh, Mount Rushmore gets uh, four all-star drinks. Yeah, for, I don't think so. Uh, you know, holiday spirits. Was there anything else related to Christmas you wanted to touch on, or did you want to go to the 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 Dude, thing where he, we're going to go? Yeah, where we're going to go? I don't know. Uh, you know, we at one point you had said P, somebody wanted us to revisit the concept of Kringle PI. A couple of people have just mentioned that on social media, and you know, but I think you know, people, I think we beat that one into the ground. It's a grand total of two. Yeah, and yeah, a so grand total of two people. We yeah. have had we have had people say that is a treatment that you should absolutely write up and shop around. I think it's a limited series. There, I, there, there's so. This many- is America. There's no such thing as a limited series. Well, yeah, we're already on to season two. Here. <laughs> <laughs> but as long as season two is on a streaming service where it's like, I just want to do eight episodes. Don't make me do network tw- television where it's like twenty-two episodes. Like, oh, God. well, I, I wrote a treatment of uh, you know the you in a Hallmark uh, Christmas movie, right? But which is just- ready if anybody out there is looking for like a four-page treatment of a really an instant classic. Sure. Drop an email to podcast at fool dot com, yeah, and we'll, it's, we'll forward it's that along. Done, and it's it's right up there. And based on the article I read uh, from, I think it was Forbes last year, breaking down the economics of Christmas movies, there's a decent chance that thing will get made because yeah. the economics of Christmas movies on the Hallmark Channel are phenomenal. Oh, I'll let Hallmark yeah. have this one for free because I just want I want it. Uh, you just want the writing credit. I I just want to be able to say, yeah, I Hallmark just, gave me a call. Yeah. All right, that's all. Can we get them to say inspired by a true story? I have to go out absolutely and um, get uh, a get well card for somebody, and um, you don't make. I'm not making it. What about a tasteful handwritten note? Have you thought about that? Well, yeah. um, the handwritten note is going to be on the card, like a bunch of people. Parker's handwriting is legitimately terrible. Yeah, uh, but uh, I. I I can throw no stones at this glass house. <laughs> As someone with objectively terrible handwriting. Is this a thing that still exists? Like a store that sells only like greeting cards? Yeah. Uh, well, not only greeting cards, but there are certainly store, like paper source. That's a that's a store that. Right. So I could go there. Yeah, yeah. you can go there. I can no longer go across the street to the bizarre place <laughs> across the street. Get you a bagel and a greeting card. They, they sold like gummy bears and bulk um, candy. Bulk candy, greeting cards, and Einstein's bagels, <laughs> yeah, and Quiznos. And Quiznos. It was, Quiznos. It was like the the most bizarre mashup of businesses. But so so you have to get a get, get well card for someone. Yeah. And by all means, complain about it to us because no right. one's listening. Right. Because you're the victim here. You are the victim. It's not whoever is sick. And what you're is it that you need to get a card, or you've started shopping for cards and realized they all cost nine dollars a piece? Oh, is that what's going to happen? Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. see, I mean, I, I the last time you hadn't I, even got to <laughs> complain about that part yet. <laughs> bought a card. I, it was. Uh, I wouldn't be entirely. I, I'm not entirely sure it's this millennium. You haven't sent a greeting card in 22 years. He is thoughtless. <laughs> <laughs> There's email. <laughs> That's right, I know. But... <laughs> well, I haven't known anybody who's gotten sick in the last 22 years. I've been very lucky. Seriously, dude, 22 years? You haven't, like... I don't know. It's been a long time. What is it's been wrong a long with time. The, the person in your home to whom you're related by marriage hasn't requested a greeting card? No, hasn't. There have been requests for, you know. Hasn't gotten a card and said, Here, could you? I've bought this. Could you put this in the dishwasher? There, there are could many you, requests. Could you like... sign this? 
I've taken the work, you know, I've done... Yes, yes, yes. I've, I've signed You've cards signed that people. other more but considerate people <laughs> have, have gotten for somebody like, oh, this person's leaving and let's we're wishing them well as they, they leave this office and we'll sign this card. My God, nothing yeah. like getting caught up in the spirit of the season, That's right? right? Like, it's That's like right. It's, it's, it's December as and Barker, you're just like, yeah. no, nah, I, I don't see the need to... Well, now that I've got you agitated, let's, as, talk, about, let's talk about your, and I'm pointing right now to Bill Mann, Idea that you were pitching. Do you want? To, let me I just, don't even know how to how to let summarize. Just, let this me just one. set this up and by saying that uh, sometimes we will email each other, forward we'll forward things over email, and sometimes we will just in a little Slack uh, group chat, the three of us just post things. And, and then sometimes it happens in real life, and sometimes it's uh, things related to work, and and other times. It's, hey, what about this topic for apropos of nothing? And this happened recently. I think you had ch- just gone on your trip, your most recent trip. So yeah. I don't think you were in the United States of America. You may have been very jet lagged. You may have been very <laughs> jet lagged because what you, what was the exact wording? The, the question was, hey, I got a great idea. Uh, is cereal soup? <laughs> this is not me saying this. This is me reading Bill Mann's words. Yeah. Uh, with incredulity, picture incredulity in my eyes, reading these words. Yeah. Here's a good topic. How is it? Is here's cereal we, here, soup? Here's something we could debate. And and by the way, here's people something. will love listening to all the interesting points that we have to bounce off of each other in analyzing this. The problem here, though, was that there was no analyze, a, 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 analyzing at all. You just went, no, that's the stupidest thing I've ever heard. Right. <laughs> Are bees I, rocks? Yeah. <laughs> it's like, let's think about that. Are bumblebees rocks? It's like, let's, let's, let's kick this around. Hey, they, what? You know, what are you talking about? If this you not- squint your eyes hard enough and you twist your head a little bit, they, yeah. Is that- fish Cleveland? It, yes, that's exactly what I got back from you. But I. You hate cereal. This I, is part of your your. I do you, hate you have like a cereal derangement syndrome. Yeah, I don't like and cereal. And this at all. is what causes you to uh, consider. Something as as absurd as what you've brought up. Possibly. But I don't eat cereal. I don't chew gum. I don't like ketchup. But I am a non-picky eater. And your gripe against cereal? It's a soup. So it's the world's worst soup. What? But you like soup? I do like soup. So I do love soup. your logic is already failing. A, it's not soup, and B, <laughs> you like soup. So w- that's not it, isn't when, it? That you have this um, sort of uh, deep-seated fear of of things which get soggy or something. It, that is very true. W- was there ever a point when you actually did, as a child, you did like cereal? Because we we grew up in kind of a golden age of breakfast. Oh, yeah. I'm picturing oh, with like Kaboom. And, yeah, oh. and, and also just that Quisp. We, we lived at a time when Quisp, we were kids. Quisp was pretty good. Yeah. <laughs> when we were kids, cereals had names yeah. that were so straightforward and fun yeah. that when we were no longer children, people decided we, we can't yeah. say this We can't ha- offer... We, sugar smacks? Right. That's exactly the one I was thinking. We, no, it, sugar is bad. Okay. Honey smacks. We're going honey oh, smacks yeah. here. It's crap. Um, so when you were a kid, did you like cereal at all? I, it really actually is the it, it's it, it's the function of cereal that I don't like. And because particularly the greatest the function of cereal. I'm going to get even? there. Can I just interrupt? Would you let me finish? I, you, no. You pulled the bottle away from the microphone in order to open it yeah. so that people wouldn't hear. Yeah. Which is runs counter to the way we usually do things here, which is to make a big production yeah. out of the fact <laughs> no, I think that we are now having function, a little right? bit more to drink. Yes. My favorite cereal, and it's not even close from a flavor perspective, is Captain Crunch. But the problem with Captain Crunch is the moment it comes in contact with milk, it immediately starts to degrade into like a paste. So the only or, way, that, as you would claim, a soup. Yeah, yeah. Well, more of a yeah, more 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 of a a mush. I haven't had Captain Crunch in a while. Captain it's Crunch, Captain Crunch is so good. It's so good, but but it loses its structure almost instantly once it comes in contact with milk. So the only solution is to have it in the spoon, 
put a little bit of milk in it, and eat it immediately. Do you ever eat dry cereal? Because you could you could just pop those. You have a little little bowl and just you no could. milk, just pop those in. One could, I could. Okay, I don't, but it could. Did you actually want to make the case that cereal is soup, or, or was it, or, or was it as both Barker and I suspected, you were jet lagged from your trip? I was just and punchy as hell. I was punchy as hell. Okay, that makes a lot more sense. Structurally, it's soup. It, it is soup like though. In what sense? It is some sort of solids in a bowl with liquid. Much like ice water is a soup. <laughs> Much like ice water. <laughs> is ice water soup? <laughs> I never thought of it that way. But I mean, <laughs> hot chocolate's a soup. I'll get a spoon and I'll see how it goes. <laughs> right. That was my point because you were you, like you, you tried to push back. I was like, there's not a place in the world. Including and especially Panera, which sells lots of soup <laughs> that has cereal on the menu in their soup section. I'm going to start a restaurant called Cereal is a Soup, and I'm going to kill it. Something I'd raised uh, right before we came here, uh, based on something you were circulating today, uh, was guilty pleasures. And uh, my claim is that uh, you... You like a New York Post headline, but I think you feel a little bad about the degree to which uh, a media establishment that you you might have some issues with in general. I don't know. Um, for the, I think you don't you don't partake of anything but the headlines of the front page of of that particular uh, newspaper. Well, kind of like we've talked. But before, you love those. We've talked before about the Onion and how so much of the humor from The Onion is wrapped up in the headline and the photo. And yes, there are often, but not always, accompanying stories. But, and I've heard people who have worked at The Onion talk about, it's all, you gotta, if you nail the, he, the headline, Everything that's, that's 90% flows. of it. And yep. then you, it the just reflects itself. Right. Yeah. And I think that friends of mine who live in New York City have talked about the appeal of the New York Post is the front page and the back page. The front page, whatever the news is, and the back page, whatever is the sports. And I don't know if there exists within the organization itself something that the three of us have talked about for years, which is almost like a a, a trophy that travels from desk to desk. Like whoever, Like if you come up with the headline... Yeah. Of either the sports section on the back or the news section on the front of the newspaper. And it's like, oh, Jim got the headline today. He gets the trophy and he gets to keep it on his desk for 24, whatever. But it's like, yeah, it's got to be such great bragging rights. It's got to be amazing. <laughs> and it, it like, I, I do wonder, I, like, I would love to see that, like, sort of a behind the scenes coming up with that juxtaposed with, like, the New York Times. Where it's like you know, here's here's a very important consequential newspaper, and the, you know that's one of the Chuck Klosterman hypotheticals. Um, we'll get to those. Okay, but but just like one of them is here are three fan in some ways fantastical news. I, I think the hypothetical from Chuck Klosterman, and for those unfamiliar, it's it's a, a series of fifty cards that you can buy. Um, and it's Chuck Klosterman putting together this list of questions because, at, by his own admission, he hates small talk. He is not interested in small talk. He would much rather talk about sort of fantastical, hypothetical situations. And one of them is um, three scenarios happen on the same day. Bigfoot is captured. I think the, like a live Bigfoot is captured in the Pacific Northwest. I believe shot. In the leg, yeah, but, you know, and, but and, captured and, alive, and thereby captured. Um, the Loch Ness. We the, find the, the Loch, Loch Ness monster, yeah. like definitive proof of the Loch Ness monster in Scotland, and the President of the United States announces um, that he has. It's like a growth, and it might be cancer. Right, he's getting tested. Getting getting tested, but may, like the President of the United States may have like thyroid cancer, something yeah. like that, and the hypothetical question is: You are the executive editor of the New York Times, what is your lead headline? Are you asking me now? Are I, you Chuck I, I am, but I'm just saying, are, like... I are we at the Times or the Post? 
Well, that's the thing. Like at the, <laughs> like at the Times, it's almost certainly the president of the United States. Damn it! At, yes. the, at the New York Post, it's like I mean, I mean, the Loch Ness monster. That's amazing. But this assets. is America, and this was, in, and we have a live Bigfoot, and that's what we're going with. <laughs> and we've had these headlines ready for years. Yeah. that was pre-written. I'm going with the I'm going with the Loch Ness monster. Are you really? Yeah. Why? Uh, just because of the. Like the president thing is is like presidents get thyroid cancer all the time. You're never making it as. What, <laughs> <laughs> Can I have the court reporter read back what you just said out loud? Presidents have thyroid cancer all the time. It's just in the category of of things which which happen to people that are like the president or the president him or herself. And and okay. and so it's a it's a very like the the here's the weird thing. That none of the presidents have had thyroid cancer, as far as we know. As far as we as know. far as we know, like yeah. uh, it's like, oh yeah, actually, like most of them had it, just never got out, right? They 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 used to bury that kind of thing, like oh yeah, it's, uh, now it all makes sense, right? right. Whereas the Loch Ness monster, like, <laughs> what? <laughs> <laughs> Wait, that was real. <laughs> <laughs> I'm buying this newspaper and I'm reading and they're breaking the story also apparently. Yeah. Yeah. Like they've they have broken all three of these stories. Do you think in the case because here's the advantage that And they're not even they're not even putting it on the website first. They're putting it in the paper. We, we, today we're breaking records. Yeah. We're selling Print, more papers than paper. ever before. Yeah. Because people are gonna want to keep a physical copy. You're of like, this. have you seen the New York Times today? Like, oh go check it out on the No, it's not on the website. You have to go out and buy it. Yeah. The headline's gotta be something like Sasquatch. You owe your uncle an apology. <laughs> <laughs> I, it, it's just occurring to me that the New York Post actually has an advantage over the New York Times because they have what amounts to two front pages. Yeah. Like the back page is it, just as and often more compelling than the front that's page. That's legit Where, real estate for them. It's, yeah. And whereas the New York Times is just like, you get the front page. Nobody cares what's on the back page. And yeah. and by the way, nobody really cares what's on the front of the page of the sports section. There is no sports section now. In the New York Times? I don't think so. I think they've folded in. They banned sports? I think during... Um, I can't remember exactly when, but they, they like folded it into the business section or something. They understand this is America, though, right? Kind of on the nose for New York, uh, though. The New York Times. Yeah. yeah. They write their own America. In a good way. It's, uh, a, it's an <laughs> island off the coast of America. Give them a break. Yeah, that's fair. Uh, I think I have this right. If you could change anything in the, the major professional if you, if you sports. Can, you can set up the way you structured the hypothetical. Um, it you're, was, given, you're given permission to change. You get to make a, a, one rule. One rule change. One rule change in a major professional U.S. sport. Okay. And the goal has to be um, to entertain yourself. No, no, no. no. <laughs> no this, this is going to make the fans love this sport more. So it's greater enjoy. Like the like, this is going to be a change that will increase excitement among the fans. Like, so we know that it's not related to baseball because there's nothing that existing baseball. So fans here like. was my rule. You get one three one free throw at somebody. <laughs> it can't baseball. be at that. You can't go head hunting. But like one time, you just get to go like you're Johnny allowed. Damon, get up here. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm Wait, get, so pitcher gets to bean a guy. Pitcher gets to not bean, but like plunk. Yeah, what are you yeah. talking about? Well, beans like going after the head. Yeah. Right? I'm sorry. I, I'm I'm being dead serious. I just thought beaning a player meant hitting the player with the ball. You're saying beaning is specific to the head? It means hitting them in the bean. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. 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 Pay attention. Um, so you, you this get is why we have these conversations. Like, so I, I can learn. like you get to go, you get go for the, you know, the, the bicep or the, you know, the yeah. chest down. Anything below down, the neck. Like, yeah, yeah. I could be Stay bad away too, from though. That. We're keeping we're keeping it just as safe as it's been, but you get got to hit them somewhere in the meat. You can just you could go for like whoever it is you most dislike, and it's just a ball. <laughs> That's what it is. It's a ball. Wait, so do they know like, it's coming? No, no, no. <laughs> At some point, like you get, and if if one gets away from you, you didn't mean to. You can always just invoke the like, ah, sorry, that was my, you know, you that was tip, my one freebie. Yeah, you, you only the, get one. You got to right? tip the hat. So the guys come up, and they're little bit more on edge like it's already scary 
<laughs> right, to go up and face a major league pitcher. Right. I once read somebody wrote a pretty good say. I think it was George Will. I'm not sure. Sh- maybe. And like, all baseball begins with like fear. Like that's part of what's happening when you walk up to the plate. Is like somebody is throwing a 95 mile an hour projectile, which may hit me, and you have to be on alert for that at all times. Uh, so now you magnify that by a lot. So just so I'm clear, the change you're making is the pitcher gets essentially one freebie. Let's say the pitcher is me and you're the hitter. Go okay. ahead. <laughs> just so we just so we make this a little more concrete. So you get to hit me. Yes. And then I get to throw at you. You get to throw if at I me. I don't get to keep throwing at you until I hit you. Oh, you don't? No. I thought you got to hit me. Oh, if I hit you, it's just a ball. Right. But if I if I throw one behind your back because I'm wild and the, the ump's like, dude, that was your one throw. And I, I, can't, I, my, can't, I can't just I can't just like do it six more times until I hit you. That was my question. My question was going to be, does like at what point does it become determined like, hey, that was my one? Because the way the rules are right now, as I understand them, is if you hit me, I get to take first base. And what you're saying is I step up to play, you hit me, and then I start going to first base, and you signal the ump like, no, 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 that was my one. And it's like, oh, okay, oh, okay come yeah. on back. Great. Yeah. That's a ball. That's and, a ball. Uh, That's a ball. How I, now? Un- if I hit you again, now I get to take first. Base. Now you get to take first. If base. I can walk, <laughs> <laughs> and I probably get a warning at that point. I do like that you have to go back into the box and face another pitch, <laughs> like right away. I, you know, I think it's got to be a four-point shot in basketball. Huh. What's, what's, and, the, what's the distance? Anything past midcourt. Four point shot. Four points. You wouldn't go five. You could go whatever you want. I'm <laughs> no, just saying, you, you're the one making the yeah, change. I'm, I'm asking saying, questions here. <laughs> I, I'm just, I'm just saying that, especially now that we see Steph Curry range where he is routinely hitting threes from the ribbons, a four point shot. Anything past mid court. Who is not playing that late in the game? Who is not playing it? Like meaning, I mean, like, like if you need four, if you need, that's like I think that's his point. It's like, oh, we're down seven with seventeen seconds left. Why aren't you shooting it from the I, lozenge for four? I, or it's we're down twenty and there's four minutes left. It's like I know how we're going to come back. Yeah, hit a few of these four pointers. Yeah, you're not. You're you're not increasing your odds. Oh, screw the odds. We're trying to make it more fun. You know, it's analytics people like you who are you killing get out. sports. Yeah. <laughs> Just killing sports. I'm about to take my one baseball throw I think it's you. only it's only if you're down four and the clock's running out that you you, you use that. You're much better off Maybe. If you're down five going for a three at normal three range. Maybe. And then, you know, getting the ball but back. But see, here's, the, here, here's where you're wrong, Bill Barker. Because for years after they put the three-point shot in, they didn't figure out the analytics of how much, how valuable it was. And it really changed the game. And so now you see much more, you see much more three-point shooting because of, because of the odds. Make it a five-point shot. Whatever the odds, whatever gets it so that it becomes a reasonable part of the game at some point. I think, I think that, I think that it it changes defenses and it opens up around because you've got to start guarding people three quarters court and you're not just trying going for a steal. You're actually guarding against a shot. I mean, okay. If we're really taking this seriously, are we taking anything seriously here? Are we changing the show? <laughs> Keep going. <laughs> like, seriously, like, what is this? I don't think it's half court. I mean, I think there's a place. There is a place where you start making things very interesting, making it a four point shot. Right? It's not half court because even it's Steph- beyond the three point line. Yeah, it's it's like another eight feet beyond the three point right. line. All right, I can see that. Fine. Um, Thanks for jumping back onto my side. As I'm to helping just be- you rescue this <laughs> damaged idea. Unlike my perfected one, um, that you know, you could see like, oh yeah, I'm watching a little bit more baseball <laughs> up until the guy gets plunked, and then I'm you know switching over to the basketball game. Right. But I want to see that because I want to see some fours. Yeah, so here's mine. That. Here's mine. And I realize now that when I proposed this question well over a month ago, I had a different idea in mind, and I don't now remember what that idea was. I'm pretty sure it was tied to baseball, but. Here's my idea, and I've had this before. 
It's hockey. My, I'm lost already. No, the prelude. Where are you no, just saying you had a better idea? No, I had a different idea. A different idea. But here's here's. But now this is your number two idea. No, this is this is number one with a bullet. This is going to make people like you. You're going to shoot people in hockey? Yes. No, <laughs> it's going to make people like you and me who don't really watch hockey all that much say, "I think I'm watching this now. Yeah. I think I'm going to watch this." So this is an NHL. Idea. NHL. Yeah. Every game in the NHL has a minimum goal requirement. Every game has a minimum of nine goals to be scored. And there are targets throughout the game where if goals aren't scored, people come off the ice. So So by by the end, it's like two on two. So it's six on six. Right. Is it six on six? It's six on six. Ish, right? if you count the goalies. Okay, yeah, I'm counting the goalies. Yeah. So it's six on six, and uh, my team's playing your team. It's six on six, and we're ten minutes into the first period, and no goals have been scored. Guess what? Each of our teams, someone's coming off the ice. Now it's five on five. So when you started out with this idea of an NHL and, thing, and, which was going to get me to watch, yeah. I thought I saw where you were going. Where did you think I was going? <laughs> <laughs> and, and now I realize just how wrong I was. One of the skaters must be a mascot. <laughs> it's like gritty. Or, you know, you, you come up with the design, whatever. <laughs> There's one person on the ice who does not have skates. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. They're a skating mascot. It's gritty. It's whoever, you know, whoever. It's the, the big Canadian guy, whoever that is. It's like an <laughs> abominable snowman, Man. right? It's like Squaw Sasquatch, the, the right? Big, you got Cornelius? <laughs> you <No>. got Cornelius? <laughs> In fact, you could change your mascot every day. Dandy. It be, it, one day it could be Yukon Cornelius, and then the next day it can be like Santa or whatever. But it's got you, the, the design structure of the costume is mandated so that it's playable but you know somewhat n- unhelpful um, <laughs> it's zany one, one of your six non-goalie skaters is that right six five six. five i'm telling you 10 minutes in no goal by the way we get to the end of the hey. first period we get to the end of the first period if it's still miraculously zero zero guess what we're starting the second period three on three do you uh, three I'm, on three? Just right Who's not in, watching that. Right into Chris with which one of these ideas you like better. Podcast at fool.com. Mascot or like Oh, you know, I thought no, among the three. All of the your, ho- your baseball idea. All yours. of the hockey purists. Well, my new idea is better. My mascot. <laughs> it must be one of the skaters. <laughs> so you led with your second best idea? <laughs> well, I just you inspired me. I You're thought trying- I thought I saw where you were going with this I well, how could you make the NHL better? Well, with gritty on the ice, you know. The ho- the hockey purists who are listening right now are seething at you, <laughs> by the way. They should write in. Yeah. They should write in. Are there hockey purists listening right now? Not anymore. I guess we'll find yeah, like, out. <laughs> there were a minute ago. This is nonsense. This is absolute nonsense. You latched on to something that I threw out yesterday, which was uh, the um, classic McSweeney's uh, decorative gourd. It's decorative gourd season, and I'm editing to keep it clean. But if you don't know that, McSweeney's gourds, Google. It, it'll get you there. It's, yeah, well, it's, pos- it's possible there will be a link in the show notes if, for this. If, for uh, those who may not know McSweeney's and... The classic essay, uh, essay, it's decorative court season. Yes. Uh, who would you have do a dramatic reading of that? Did you have an idea? You liked uh, some part of it, I think. Oh, yeah. I think, I mean, Samuel L. Jackson is is a great choice. I think you could also go in a different direction if you wanted to. Um there, it, Some of the names thrown out, Christopher Walken. Christopher Walken yeah. would be great. Sure. Dennis Leary. Dennis thought, Leary would be Let me great. throw you out another one. Will Arnett. Will Arnett. Lego Batman himself. Yeah. Yeah, that would be great. Melissa McCarthy reading it, I think, would be fantastic. Yeah, I think that would. She could read out of a phone book if I, such a thing existed anymore, and also, it would be funny. Also, just, just to go in a, a slightly different direction... Helen Mirren. <laughs> <laughs> just, I'm just thinking. That's a very different direction. Right? Right. I know. That's, that's what I think would be. Lawrence Olivier. <laughs> yeah, I mean, just like. 
We have Queen Elizabeth II reading this for some reason. <laughs> it's like I don't know. No one knew she recorded this, but here we are. <laughs> um, so, so every uh, every Christmas, I take a moment to either read on my own or listen to um, the classic Dylan Thomas, "A Child's Christmas in Wales," and like, I mean. Dylan Thomas is long gone, but a voice like that, reading that essay, would be pretty amazing. <sighs> Soup. <laughs> Cereal. <laughs> Cheers. Merry Christmas. Same to you guys. Let these cards and presents right here for me.